what is up? We are digging into a long, long-awaited feature release in Avalite's Titan software, Timeline. There is a lot to Timeline, so let's start at the very beginning because it's a very good place to start. So what even is Timeline? You can use Timeline to create precisely timed sequences that run from the console's internal clock or any external source of timecode. Think opening sequence for corporate events, an intricate performance ran with a click track or timecode, or a show that runs alongside a video. Now we are here in the timeline window, so let's give you a little lay of the land. This bottom bar here is the overview bar, and you can see a thumbnail version of your entire timeline and what part is in your complete view. The tools to the left are the selection and pan tool to either modify elements or maneuver throughout the timeline. Individual tracks can collapse or expand, and you can use these arrow buttons to shift through the trigger points. Timeline sequences live in the Titan software, much like queues or queue lists, so we need to hit record to create one. Our record options open up here on the right side, and we can choose timeline or tap the record button four times. In the top right of the window live our options, and this small three lines button is what Avalites calls the context menu, and you will find yourself hopping in and out of here often. So, general rule of thumb. If you need to adjust something and don't know where it is, it is probably up here. For example, snaps, plus advanced tools and view options. Last but not least is the timecode clock. What you're looking at here are hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Regular, degular start, stop, play, and record buttons. No reason to be shy. Let's get our fingers a little dirty. We start with the plus button to drop a playback on the timeline, and Titan gives us a few options. Let's choose existing playback, and then choose from our playbacks pool. The playback has turned red, and we have a few options here. We will dig into many of these options later, so let's keep this simple for right now. Simply press anywhere on the timeline you want the playback to drop in, and it will load where you touched. Pro tip, in a later video, we will teach you how to import some markers into the timeline to make aligning triggers a breeze. Next up, let's adjust some of these trigger points, so we should zoom in a bit. The most straightforward way to move things around is to draw a box over trigger points you'd like to adapt, and then manipulate it across the timeline with your finger. Another more precise way is to enable the wheels in our context menu, and then select the trigger points one by one with the arrow keys and scroll the trigger point to an exact frame. You can also modify the fade time here for smooth up and down times. Let's get back into the context menu you again and choose open table view. This takes you to a familiar spreadsheet style view of the timeline and is an excellent way to see how the timeline engine thinks. Along each track, you have referenced playbacks, doing specific actions at certain levels over time. Later, when more is added to the timeline, you will see different actions here. Back to the timeline view and we are going to delete this track. Select delete first and then tap the track for it to disappear. Poof, it's gone. And if you regret that, undo will save the day. That, I'd say, is quite the introduction to Timeline. Believe it or not, we are barely scratching the surface of how you can use it. Plug in next for a crash course on building timelines and playbacks from scratch and switching to record mode to capture live playback right here at Limelight Wired.